to beat you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if someone did what do you do for them if someone did beat you beat you to Allah you know if you're Umar and Abu Bakr did beat you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what do you do you hate Abu Bakr you know you want to trip Abu Bakr you want to impede his you know or sort of break his leg uh, absolutely not but but this is this is what you do and this was a story that Ibn al-Jawzi reports in uh, one of his beautiful books. It's called Bahr al dumua And it's probably titled, properly titled. Uh, it is Bahr al dumua which means the ocean of tears. And then he, in, 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 in this book, Bahr al dumua he, he, uh, he uh, relates, uh, reports this uh, story. Uh, it's a story about Abdullah ibn Mubarak and Fudayl ibn Ayyad and Sufyan al Thawri. Uh, but uh, Sufyan was mentioned only once in the story. But Abdullah ibn Mubarak, you know Abdullah ibn Mubarak? He's a, so. Uh, huge, right? Like, uh, you know, Fudayl ibn Ayyad, Abd al Haramain. We're talking about the uh, sort of the cream of the crop during their generation, during their time. The best of the best. Uh, the, the greatest of all uh, in, in, in many regards. And Sufyan al Thawri. So we're talking about the most knowledgeable, the most pious, the greatest, the mo- the people who had the greatest religious and moral integrity of their generation. Uh, so Abdullah ibn Barak went to Al Kaaba one day. There was a drought in Mecca, and Abdullah ibn Barak went to Al Kaaba, and he found a black young man uh, who was a slave uh, sitting by one of the doors of Al Kaaba, and Abdullah ibn Barak sat close to him, and he heard him making dua for rain. He heard them making dua for rain. And then he said, um, Oh Allah, أخلقت الذنوب الوجوه or أخلقت الوجوه الذنوب Oh Allah, the faces are worn because of the sins. And you have chosen to discipline your servants, to remind them of you and to discipline them. But oh Allah, show them your mercy. Uh, nothing but good comes from you. Show them their, your mercy. Bring down the rain now. Uh, they are going through extreme hardship. Bring the rain down now. And then this uh, boy kept on saying, Bring it down now. Asa'a, asa'a, asa'a. So he said, and Abdullah bin Barak said there, was no, there were no clouds. And he said, now, now, now. And then Abdullah bin Barak looked up and there were clouds and started to heavily rain, to pour down rain. So Abdullah bin Barak looked at this and he's like, well, you know, uh, because likely he was praying, likely, you know, his friends also were praying. Uh, his friends are who? Sufyan al Thawri and Fudayr ibn Ayyad. These people were praying. And then he sees this, and then he goes to Fudayr ibn Ayyad, and then he follows this young boy uh, to his place, uh, to, to his residence. And that was the residence of his master. Uh, he followed him to his residence, and then he went to Fudayr ibn Ayyad. And he was distressed. The, uh, you know, uh, so Fudayl ibn Ayad was talking to him, and, and then he was not paying attention. Fudayl was, what is wrong? He was uh, saying to, to him, "What's wrong with you?" And uh, so Abdullah bin Barak said, "To Fudayl, sabaqana ilayhi ghayruna. We were beaten to Allah. Someone else beat us to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Fatawallahu dunana. Sabaqana ilayhi ghayruna. Fatawallah." Dunana. Someone else beat us to Allah and he took him as a wali. Uh, he, he took him, uh, you know, uh, as a wali, not us. He took him, not us, as uh, a wali, as a friend. Uh, so then, 
so, but, but what did Abdullah bin Mubarak do? Abdullah bin Mubarak went to the house uh, of that, you know, the, the house of that uh, young boy, and he asked the he asked about him, and the the, the master came out and said to him. Uh, I can give you anyone, but not this one, because I feel his, the blessings of his presence in my home. And then Abdullah bin Mubarak kept on pleading to him to, to, to buy this young boy from him. And uh, he said to him, how, how do you want me to go back to Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad? You see, Abdullah bin Mubarak, these people are known to be, you know, uh, to be who they are, you know, to, who we know them to be. Um, so he said to this man, how do you want me to go back to Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad and Sufyan al uh without basically bringing them the, the boy that I talked to them about? To the, uh, uh, until the master said to him, okay, I will, I will sell him to you, Abu Abdul Rahman. Uh, your, your, your visiting of me and your coming to my home is so dear to my heart. Okay, I'll, I'll send him to you. And then he was talking, he was taking the boy back uh, to Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad and Sufyan al thawri you know, to show them the gym, to show them the, 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 the one whose uh, prayer was answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the people of Mecca were, you know, uh, where we're praying well, without uh, uh, accomplishing or achieving their 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 want or need, so he took him uh, took him back, and then on the way, the boy said to him, uh, the, the boy called him, Yeah, Abu Abdul Rahman, uh, and that was the kunya of Abdullah ibn Mubarak. So the boy called him, and then <clears throat> Abdullah Mubarak said to him, Labbaik, which means at your service. So the boy is like, you know, masters don't say at your service to their slaves. Slaves say at your service to their masters. Don't say that to me. Uh, and then Abdullah bin Mubarak said to him, Ma turid ya habibi, what would you like, O oh my O oh beloved? Uh, and then the boy said to him, why have you bought me? You could have bought someone else. I'm too weak to, s <clears throat> I'm too weak to serve. And then Abdullah ibn Mubarak said to him, uh, uh, May Allah never see you serving me ever. Uh, I did not buy you for this. I bought you to, to free you. And Abdullah Barak used to be wealthy and he used to be, you know, uh, very generous. Extremely, extremely generous. And I build a house for you. And I'll get you married. And I will serve you. Uh, so the so the boy then uh, the, the the boy then uh, started to you know to cry and he said uh, that you you're not doing this except because except after seeing me seeing my communication with Allah at the Sali my communication with Allah and I wanted to keep this private uh, and I enjoyed it when it was. <clears throat> and I enjoyed it when it was private, uh, but now you know about it, and now everyone will know about it. Uh, and he started to cry, and then he, he asked him to uh, to go to, to pray to rakas. They, they passed by a masjid, the masjid. He asked him to pray to to rakas, and he went in and uh, prayed to rakas. And Abdullah bin Barak was was waiting for him. He told them, "Why don't come? Come!" He told them, "Let's go first and see the Fudayl ibn Ayyad. Uh, but he was he was waiting for him. And then after he prayed, uh, <clears throat> he said to him, "Astaghfirullah, uh, I leave you in Allah's 
uh, protection and uh, Abdullah Barak said, uh, where, where are you going? Uh, and he told him, I'm going on a long journey. And then he prostrated and died. Uh, maybe he had asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take him at that time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to his dua like he did before. So the point here is Abdullah ibn Mubarak felt jealous. Abdullah ibn Mubarak felt that someone beat him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We were praying for rain. How come Allah responded to him and did not respond to me? So if that's jealousy, then that's, that's fine. If that's what you feel, you feel upset because someone beat you to Allah, it is fine. But that's what you do with uh, people who beat you to Allah. First, you're happy because your Lord is, is happy. Your Lord is, uh, or your Lord is pleased. You're pleased because your Lord is pleased. Allahu afrah bitawbat al-abd min ahadikum sakata ala ba'iri wa qada Allahu bi ardin fala. Allah is, uh, rejoices in the repentance of His servant more than one of you who had found this camel after you lost him in a barren desert. Or, uh, but but you, you, you're, you're, you're pleased because your Lord is pleased and you're also, uh, you become affectionate towards those people who beat you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not a sense of rivalry where you start to have, you know, uh, resentment or you hold grudges against them because they beat you to Allah. You become more affectionate towards the people who beat you uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because like I said before, wala wal bara means that you remove your ego from the center and you place Allah at the center. And those who are closer to Allah become closer to you. Those who are more beloved to Allah become more beloved uh, to you. So that was uh, the, the jealousy of Abdullah ibn Mubarak and Fudayl ibn Ayyad and those people. They did not want anyone to beat them to Allah. I remember Wahib ibn al-Ward, when we were talking about Wahib ibn al-Ward, one of the statements last time we were talking about Wahib ibn al-Ward, one of the statements of Wahib ibn al-Ward was, إِنَ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَلَّا يَسْبِقَكَ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدْ فَفَعَلْ Wahib used to say, if you can make sure that no one will beat you to Allah, then do it. Make sure that no one will beat you to Allah. If you can do that, if you can make sure that no one will beat you to Allah, do it. How do you do it? By excelling in the service of Allah. By excelling in sincerity and devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, because likely... <clears throat> That boy, was, <clears throat> that boy was a slave, so he likely did not have that much time to, to serve in terms of like do things, in terms of pray, although his master said that he prays most of the night and he, he allowed him because he felt the blessings of his presence in his home. Uh, but he did not have the, you know, the capacity to do the things like Abdullah ibn Barak used to do. Abdullah Barak used to be a great scholar, a verifying erudite scholar. He used to be a great mujahid, one of the greatest mujahid. Uh, and he used to be also uh, a great nasik, abid, a worshiper, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and we're not saying necessarily that this boy was better than Abdullah ibn Barak. We are not judging uh, in, the, in that sense. But at least Abdullah ibn Barak felt that you know, Allah responded to him uh, and did not respond to me. And, and that you know, told Abdullah Mubarak something. So th the point here is that there is, you know, uh, your, the travel by the heart is completely different from the travel by the body. Uh, when your heart, your heart can cover a much larger distance in a much uh, shorter time than your body. You could, you could uh, advance on the journey
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by millions of times uh, with your heart, by millions of times more than your, your body. Uh, so it is devotion, it is sincerity, it's humility, it's brokenness that probably got this boy ahead of uh, many others who did uh, a lot more than him in terms of service, in terms of worship, in terms of ritual, rituals. So that's, that's ghayra. Ghayra is basically to make sure that no one beats you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and uh, ghayra lillah is to also feel you know, angry when the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are violated. When the bounds of Allah are violated. The Shaykh said here, it is three levels. Well, here ala thalati darajat, it is of three levels. At darajatul ula ghayratul abid. At darajatul ula ghayratul abid ala da'a. The first 